Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Chat with Pastor. And uh, I just want to say, in case there are um, any people watching who are not uh, members of our church, that um, this is Daryl and I'm Karen Weber, and we are the senior pastors of the Pentecostals of Lafayette. And tonight we're just going to chat a little bit with you. And if you want to comment or if you have a question, you're welcome to add that in the comments. And um, we want to tell you a few things that are going on around the church, kind of give you a state of the church. Uh, and then um, we will uh, wrap up with a, a few words of devotion before we end tonight. Um, so first of all, I wanted to, I wanted pastor to just kind of talk to you a little bit about how the church is doing right now um, in, in this situation that we're in, because it is very different for us. And so why don't you go ahead and tell them. Thanks, that. Karen. And hello, everybody. We're so glad to uh, see you in spirit here, I'm assuming it would be uh, called. But we're uh, the church, uh, I guess, on the physical side, we're very blessed that uh, the church our size, which is a, a considered a large church, that um, we had one person who uh, had tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. And we're very happy to say that uh, that person is is doing well and is uh, is back up and about. So we're thankful for mm -hmm. that. Uh, I know some uh, churches have been hit pretty hard, especially uh, churches I've heard in the areas of uh, Illinois and, and some of those places where, uh, you know, it's it's just been very tough. And down in the New Orleans area, uh, we here in our city uh, have faced a, a good bit of uh, testing uh, positive uh, a number of, of those that have been infected. But our church, uh, for the better part, we're thankful for them uh, being healthy and, uh, you know, surviving this, uh, this probably the, the main uh, influx of this virus. We're still peaking here in Louisiana. Uh, you know, we haven't leveled off yet. So it's still very serious and it's important that we continue to practice those things that uh, our our uh, community leaders are asking us to. Um, you know, the uh, you know we have health workers, many of our health, uh, health workers in nursing and uh, in doctor's offices and hospitals. We have emergency room workers. Uh, all of them, uh, save the one that was infected a couple of weeks ago, all of them are doing well and we're very thankful for that. Uh, you know, I'm going to start with, I guess, the not so good news with the infection. And also, you know, we've had a few that have lost their jobs during this time. Um, that is uh, never something that we want to take lightly because that is that's the livelihood of some, you know, a family. And so these folks that have uh, either lost their job uh, for long term or short term, um, we're, we want them to know that we're praying for them. Uh, a number of our folks have had their hours cut back. Uh, I had several tell me that uh, they're not allowing them to work over a certain amount of hours. Some have been cut back to half the hours they're used to working. Um, and uh, I've had uh, at least three tell me that. Uh, and I know that there are more. So we're, we're, we have some folks that really need our prayer, and uh, we will conclude tonight certainly by praying for all of those that uh, that are facing, you know, these tough uh, financial times. We have business owners in our church, um, and uh, you know, the church is a business. The church is in the people business, and uh, so we want to keep all of these. Uh, precious folks that call themselves the Pentecostals of Lafayette that are part of our church family that uh, are facing these tough times. We certainly want to keep them in our prayers. And uh, if they, you know, certainly they have needs and things like this, they can call upon their church and some some uh, needs have been met. And uh, we are, but for the better part, uh, you know, people's jobs are intact and people are working. 
um, you know, and healthy. We're thankful for that. The physical side of the church, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing, um, some, some good things happening during those times, these times. And, uh, we know that, uh, you know, the physical side, uh, is just part of life and the things that roll in like these, these, uh, economic issues and et cetera. But there's also a spiritual side of our church. And I can certainly say, uh, you know, I, I don't always have, uh, the pulse, so to speak, of every physical thing that's happening because we have so many people and many feel like, uh, you know, they can, they can just go to God in these things. And we may not hear several, you know, some things that are ta- happening, but I can feel some spiritual things taking place. I feel, uh, our church on a spiritual level is, uh, is climbing up. I talked to one of our leaders recently. Uh, he was, we were both in our vehicles traveling. He was traveling across the state and I was traveling across the city and, uh, we were talking and, uh, you know, he said, uh, I, I've never been able to have so much communication with, with people in our church as I have now. And what we're seeing is we're seeing a, a greater connection, even though we're not together. There is uh, something that maybe we're experiencing that maybe the uh, early church experienced. Uh, they didn't have the connectivity of even the things we're using in electronics and technology, but yet they talked about a unity and they talked about a togetherness and a oneness. And I believe it was a spirit that they felt that the presence of God was moving in their lives and in the mission that they were involved in. And that's what we're feeling right now. And it leans to uh, the fact that we are, God's gathering his church together to do some powerful things. So physically, I would say God's really kept his hand on us. Um, you know, the church, uh, you would ask maybe financially, how is our church doing? I've talked to, uh, I've seen other churches and I've heard statements that many are suffering in their churches and because many have lost their incomes. It may be a rural setting. Uh, you know, we're more of a metro church. Um, but I'm thankful that, uh, we're paying our bills. We have not had to let any of our staff, uh, uh, release them. But we've we've kept them on on uh, in you know being paid uh, full time and uh, so for right now uh, we put all those the future things in God's hands but right now we're good and I'm thankful for that and it, I tell you where that's coming from that's coming from the faithfulness of God's people um, you know faithfulness is not what you do when all is well anybody can be faithful in the church house. Anybody can be faithful with all the blessings are flowing and everything's fine and the sun is shining and uh, the, the fruit is hanging on every limb of the tree. But let me tell you, real faithfulness is tested and is proven when you're facing difficulty. And in these difficult times, I know many of our uh, elders who are on fixed incomes and a budget, uh, you know, of being retired, um, you know, their, their retirements, uh, are being affected by, uh, their investments. You know, many of their retirements are hooked into Wall Street and, you know, the, 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 uh, the market and all of these things. But you know what? Our people for the better part are remaining faithful in, in, in giving, faithful in prayer. I'm hearing, uh, people that are faithful in, uh, witnessing and uh, all of these things that will test our faithfulness. I'm so glad to report to you both physically and on the spiritual side, the Pentecostals of Lafayette is doing very well. Aren't we pastoring a great church? Amen. Uh, I'm glad to be along for the ride and uh, God has blessed us tremendously uh, with you. And we're so thankful for you. We have a fantastic church. We miss all of you. We would love to see each and every one of you. Um, unfortunately, right now we're we're in this situation that we're in because of the pandemic. But we will um, we will do what we need to do so that we can be uh, safe and be well. And so, with that being said, let me go ahead and mention a few things and a few ways just to make sure you are all aware of things that we're providing because we can't get together 
on our normal basis. Um, first of all, I want to say, and let me just say that if you have a question and you want to drop a question in the comments, uh, we may not see it and be able to answer it here, but we will always go back and look through the comments and, and uh, answer any questions you have. Or if you'd like to message us on our church page, that would be fine. But I do want to mention that we have link group leaders in our church. Uh, every church member is assigned a link group leader. And these leaders are connecting with our members either by phone or by Zoom meeting, just to make sure that the pastoral care is taken care of. And I do want to say that if you do not know who your link group leader is, or maybe you have not been contacted by a link group leader, if you will comment or message us, we will make sure that you get assigned a link group leader because we want everyone to be connected and have that personal care touch uh, to everyone in our church family. Weekly, um, our office staff sends out an email blast to everyone that we have your email address for, and it has a graphic that explains all of the digital content that will be scheduled for that week. Uh, if you are not getting that uh, on a weekly basis, we did it, we started at the week of Easter, we did it again this past week. If you are not getting that, you might wanna message us your email address so we can just make sure we have that correct for you. Let me tell you a few things that are going on for our church every week for our children. We have Zoom classes on Wednesday night for our crosswalk classes for our kids. On Sunday mornings, we have Kids Church uh, video recorded content that is available to watch. And uh, it, usually once a week, I do story time with me mom uh, just to have something for the children. Uh, I miss them very much. And um, so we do that weekly. We also have uh, something from the youth and something from the young adults every week, whether it's a devotion or an activity. Our Spanish ministry is having a devotion every Monday night. Um, we have prayer every Tuesday morning, I believe at eight o'clock. We have Bible studies that are going on that are being taught, um, that are being taught um, by Zoom, and so you can get connected with that. Our church services on Wednesday and Sunday are online, uh, unless we're able to have church in the parking lot, which we hope to do this Sunday. Uh, either way, we will still have the 1030 service broadcast uh, online. And then each week we will also have something extra. It may be Testimony Tuesday. We may have a photo challenge. We may have a church chat. We may have uh, music that we put out. So these are some things that we're putting out weekly just so that you can stay connected because we can't all gather in our church building. Now, I want to mention that um, if you know someone who is not on social media, maybe they're not on Facebook, they're not on Instagram and Twitter, they can still get all of our recorded content content if they have internet and they or they have a smartphone and they want to go to YouTube. If you uh, search for the Pentecostals of Lafayette, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and everything that we put out that is recorded um, is available there on our YouTube channel. Um, also, if you go to our website and you scroll down about halfway down the home page and you click on the big box that says calendar, you can kind of see, uh, you can see our church calendar in real time. Now, right now there's not a lot on it, but we're trying to keep it updated with our services and any information that we have. I also want to mention something that we did yesterday. We took, uh, thank, Thank you to the sound department. We took some messages that pastor preached in past years and we loaded them onto iTunes under podcasts. So if you have an iPhone, an iPad, if you are on iTunes and you go to podcast and you search for the Pentecostals of Lafayette, you can actually listen to some of pastor's messages from the past that we have put out there for you as well. We're just trying to uh, find ways to keep you connected to your church and, and keep you spiritually fed um, while we're in this um, situation that we're in where we can't gather in our church building. So I hope you're um, taking advantage of all of those things. Um, so uh, pastor, what are some ways that if somebody still wants to connect with us because they don't see us on a weekly basis in person, 
what are some ways that they can connect to you, to the staff? Um, well, uh, our staff is, uh, we're not all in the office at the same time, but there's sort of a flexible schedule where uh, they appear in the office on occasion. Uh, I'm there most of the time and uh, um, the, they are all available, uh, just maybe not in the office daily. Uh, you can call the office, leave a message. We check our messages. If we're not there, we can check our messages frequently. And also, uh, you can email, uh, the office, uh, or any staff member, including myself. Uh, you can reach us through our email. Um, also, you can communicate, uh, through our link group leaders. Uh, our link group leaders are staying in communication with me. If uh, someone has a need or someone has needs prayer or they're, uh, they're ill or facing something they need prayer with or help with, they communicate that to me immediately. And I, uh, along with the link group leader, leader, we, uh, we pray for these situations and they get me involved as soon as they find anything out. So you need to communicate also with your link group leader. And as Karen said a moment ago, if you're not sure uh, which link group you're a part of, or if you're not in a link group, just let us know, contact the office, let us know. We will connect you with a link group leader. Uh, we have a number of them um, and uh, we will make sure that uh, you have uh, that access to someone that uh, will will certainly uh, represent me in pastoral care. But again, where our staff is available, you can contact the office. Um, you know, something else uh, we we want to we want to do, and we want to make sure that uh, that not just the staff and not just a leader, but every part of the body of our church. We are all the body. Um, why don't you make it your um, your duty, your your duty in uh, in the body to connect with someone else who is in the body and check on them, check on somebody, some of some of our fellow church members, um, check on them. Just just call and encourage and say, ask them how they're doing. Ask if there's anything you can help them pray about. Uh, this that will go a thousand miles uh, with a person. And uh, during these times, we really need to step out and make those connections. Um, you know, the leadership can never make enough connections with the church to take the place of the entire body. The body was made to do that. And so so, uh, you know, if you you think about over the next several days, just just make it a part of your schedule to check on somebody, give them a call, shoot them a text. Uh, you know, maybe an email or a message, however you can connect with them and let them know you're thinking about them. That's very important these times. Mm -hmm. Very important. You know, too, um, we're doing our part also as a church. We're uh, trying to uh, provide some things to our healthcare care workers, to our nurses that are working in our hospitals and our doctor's offices. We're trying to provide some things for them and support. But if you happen to know of someone in our church that that maybe needs groceries or, uh, you know, needs something, maybe they can't get out and they need uh -huh. us to run and pick up a prescription for them or something. We have people that would love to help out in that area. So that's another way that uh, if you know of someone or, or if you hear of someone and you want to help, um, that's that's just a great way to be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. Um, in, in, it's our, and I do want to say something else because there may be people watching here that um, that are not part of our church body. We would love, especially especially if you're in the Lafayette area, we would love to connect with you. If you would like a Bible study taught to you, even by Zoom or on the phone or however, we would be happy to connect you with someone uh, with, that would teach a Bible study to you if you want to know more about the Bible. And if you would like to be baptized, we would love to baptize you. All you have to do is message us, put it in the comments, and we will get um, connected with you and get that taken care of. Because you know what? Um, this is no time to um, to ignore what God is doing because God's doing some things in this earth today. And and I just I, we all want to be ready and we want to be in relationship with Him. Um, before Pastor uh, has a few words of devotion, I. 
uh, I've had a lot of people say, what next? You know, what is it going to look like when we come back and have church together? Well, who knows? But I do know that very first service that we're all back together, it's probably going to be like camp meeting. But um, but I can't wait. But let me just mention that we're taking it day by day. We are following the guidelines of our government leaders and our health leaders and um, and trying to be uh, as wise as we can for our, our the safety of our people. We're waiting right now to kind of see how this um, social distancing and this quarantine is going to play out. Uh, so we're kind of waiting to see what the month of May is going to look like. Uh, we're trying to make plans for Mother's Day, whether we're back in our church service or not. Um, but I do want to say this. In May, we always honor our graduates. And so if you are a graduate or if you know a graduate that is a member of our church, whether it's a high school graduate, a college graduate, tech school, um, any higher education, if they graduated in the winter of 2019 or they're graduating in the, the spring of 2020, we are still going to honor all of our graduates. Um, so what we would need you to do is go to our website, tpolchurch.com slash graduate. And on that page will be some instructions and also be a form that you can complete. And uh, you can complete it, fill it out and email it right back to us. It's a fillable form because we still want to uh, honor our graduates this year, uh, no matter what COVID-19 does to us. Um, also, we want to mention to our children and our young people that the summer youth camps that our children always attend and our youth always attend, those have been rescheduled for a later date. They will not be in June. They have been rescheduled for a later date. So you can see the church calendar. We've already rescheduled those to show you the dates that they're going to occur. And so we just those are the things that are coming up right away that we do know have been affected. So I just want to make you aware of that. But before Pastor brings you a devotion and we close out tonight, I do want to say that if the weather cooperates, yeah. If the weather cooperates, we are going to try our best to have our service in the parking lot this Sunday. Now, all of our church family knows we have limited parking and um, because we are still under social distancing uh, guidelines, we are going to have to split up our church into different services. We don't want to do that, but we're just going to have to. So if you're uh, I believe it's A through D. I think you can check the website. You can check all of our uh, our social media outlets. But we have three different services and we ask that you attend based on your last name, um, simply because we just do not have enough parking spaces where you all could see. And we will all be able to tune into an FM station in our cars and we will be able to have church together if the weather cooperates. So um, we do have to consider that, you know, we have a lot of equipment out there. And so we have to watch the weather for that. So, um, so before pastor says his devotion, I just want to say how much I love you and I appreciate you and I miss you. And this has really let all of us know what it really means to be part of the body of Christ, because it is like family. It, it really is a family. And I pray that you all are doing well. And I pray that you miss me as much as I miss you, but uh, probably not. But um, but I do. And I can't wait to see all of you. And uh, and we're looking forward to that. Well, we do miss you. We miss you greatly. And uh, you're you're a very, very important part of our heart. Uh, God connected us miraculously, and we can't wait to see you all again and uh, hug your necks, shake your hands, <laughs> smile at you in person. Uh, but until that time, you know what? God has a plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I want to read a verse of scripture to you. You know, let me say this before we, we take just a couple of minutes here with just a brief devotion, and then we're going to pray. But, uh, you know, we love our church family. We love you. And I want you to know that uh, we pray for you. Uh, uh, we, we cover you in prayer. We cover you uh, 
uh, in with faith. Uh, we're asking God to do more remarkable things in your lives during this time. This isn't a holding pattern. I don't want you to see this as a holding pattern. I want you to see this as a launching pad. And there's a big difference. A holding pattern may last for a long time and you just you just don't change. You just stay there and it's just uh, revolving. But a launching pad is getting ready to do greater things. It's preparing, it's positioning yourself. And I, I want you to see this time as God's positioning us to do some great things for him. And not just our our immediate local assembly, but I believe the wonderful men and women who have gone out of the uh, out of the Pentecostals of Lafayette and are, and are pastoring and are leaders, and some are members of other churches now uh, around the state and around the nation. Uh, we're covering them with prayer, and we're praying for them, and we want them to know. Some of, we have some missionaries, we have pastors, uh, evangelists, and we want you to know we're covering you with prayer and. We are believing that God is going to bring great revival and outpouring to your congregations and in your life personally. And we're believing those things for you as well. Just wanted to say that. And I believe God gives shepherds a word for the flock. I believe that um, before I pastored, I didn't understand it. But after I started pastoring, God began to really speak to me as a pastor for the people of God. And I'm very honored to be able to bring to you what I feel the, the Holy Ghost has impressed upon me that we need to hear right now. And it's Luke chapter 12 and verse 22. Jesus said to his disciples, now they are very disturbed. They are uh, worried. They start throwing lots of questions at him. Um, he, he knows their mind. He knows their heart. And so he begins to address these unsettled feelings. And he said, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Now, that word thought in the Greek, it means don't be anxious. Here's how we'll say it. Don't worry. Jesus looked at his disciples who were very anxious and beside themselves, not knowing what was about to happen in the future. And he says, don't worry. Don't worry. And then he goes into a number of verses uh, all the way through the uh, verses 23, 24, 25, talking about uh, the birds that he feeds and the grass that he grows and the sun that shines. And he goes down through all of these things, uh, talking about those things. They have their they have they're not worried about anything because God takes care of them. At least 12 times in Scripture, you're going to find Jesus is recorded as, as saying, don't worry. Other times he says, don't be afraid. He says, fear not. This is something very powerful uh, that you're going to see in Scripture. It is a not just a theme, but I believe it is a principle. Um, I understand why the world is stressed out. I understand why the world is worried. I understand why they have panic attacks and they're 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 falling apart and they don't know what to do and they're arguing and fighting and uh, they just you know it's frightening to be dealing with some of the things in our world that we see people dealing with right now. I understand why people in the world now I don't condone it, but I understand why people in the world take drugs and drink. I go on eating binges, go on shopping sprees and wild adventures and do all kinds of things to try to escape the issues of life. When re in reality, we know we can't escape the issues of life, no matter what, what ladder we climb, what height we attain, what, what uh, fame, uh, economic status, what any place we get, we know the issues of life do not disappear. But people are trying to run from those things and they find many ways to do it. We are living in a worry ridden culture. And the amazing thing about it is this is the most comfortable society in the history of mankind. This is a society that has had the most. We've have we have more now than we've ever had before. But it seems like it is the most worry ridden society that has ever been on the face of the earth. The word worry actually comes from the old German word. It means to choke or to strangle. 
It's talking about mental strangulation through fear and anxiety and stress and worry. And I would not be teaching this brief devotion here tonight if some of us were not experiencing this or if this were not coming through the front door very soon for somebody in our congregation or somebody listening. So you need to be ready for this. Now, there are two realms where you can experience worry. First of all, you can experience worry in the physical realm. The second place you can experience worry is in the spiritual realm. But in, uh, when you look at these things, you'll realize that this is wor worry that's connected to earthly things and worry that's connected to heavenly things. But in verse 22, Jesus says, don't worry about your life. And he goes on to talk about what you eat, talks about your body, talks about clothing, talks about these things. In other words, stop worrying about where your paycheck's coming from. Don't worry about, you know, are you going to have enough to eat? Don't worry about, you know, the provision. Uh, is it going to still be there next week? What's the stock market going to do? What is my job going to do? Will I have a job? Will I be able to get a job if I don't have one now? He says, don't worry. And we say, well, that's easy for you to say, Pastor. You know, you've got a job right now. No, I'm telling you what Jesus said. Jesus said you shouldn't worry. And it goes deeper with, by, than just leaving you with a don't worry. Down in verse 32, he says, don't be afraid on the spiritual level for the father, your father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. So according to Jesus, you're really left with nothing to worry about, nothing to be stressed about, nothing to panic over. He's trying to get us to understand that when we come into his kingdom, God takes care of us. Very important. Your worries really are ended. So when you come into the kingdom, so that defines your life, that I'm trusting God. My life is not defined by my worries. My life is defined by, defined by my trust, my trust in God. The disciples were very worried about how they were going to make it, how they were going to make a living. Remember, they left all they had to follow Jesus. And now he's, you know, telling them he's probably not going to be with them in this way. And they don't understand all this. Some of their questions were what's going to happen to us? You know, who's going to take care of us? You know, we live in a, you know, the world we live in, the society we live in, Jesus, you know, what's going to happen? Who's going to take care of us when, you know, we, we don't, we're not able to take care of ourselves. Well, the answer, of course, the Lord gives it to them is God's going to take care of you. That's what his answer is. God's the one who feeds the bird. He raises the grass in the field. He knows what you need. Uh, and he has given you the kingdom. And when you were born into the kingdom, you just came under the care of God. That's what First Peter 5, 7 is saying, casting all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. Some never really understand the rich young ruler. We've heard a lot of teaching on that. But Jesus told the rich young ruler, go sell everything you have and come and follow me. Give all of your money to the poor and come and follow me. Not, uh, you know, when you look at this, you begin to realize that this young, this rich young ruler had some deep seated issues Jesus was trying to deal with. He says, I'm not going to do that. And he turned around and he walked away very disgruntled very disheveled, dissatisfied because he was very rich. And this now this isn't about giving all your possessions. This isn't about that at all. It's about what possesses you, what possesses you. I think sometimes we don't see the true value of spiritual treasure in our lives. And the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in a field. A man finds it. He goes after it with joy. And he sells everything he has to buy that field. There's nothing worth more than the treasure that I have found in the kingdom of God. It's worth more than money. It's worth more than position. It's worth more than relationships. It's worth more than careers. Nothing is worth more than this treasure that you and I have in the kingdom of God. But I'm afraid it hasn't occurred to a lot of people just what they have. And that's why we find people worrying. We had much to worry about before we found the treasure. 
Remember those days? How many things did you try to how, try? How many things did you try before you found the treasure? You know, how many places did you go? How many pits did you have to climb up out of before you found the treasure? How many demons took you down the wrong road? How many habits did you have to fight? How many sleepless nights did you spend? How many empty days did you put up with? But one day you made a long trip from where you were to where Jesus could be found. There's nothing like being in the kingdom of God. And that's the message of Jesus that I'm talking about right now. You've got to realize the value of his kingdom and you've got to make that kingdom in your life, number one. It has to have priority. And with that action comes his care, comes his provision, comes his blessings, comes his promise. So what's the secret? The secret is trusting God. And I want to close this devotion by showing you how the psalmist David takes the 23rd Psalm to show you how he trusts God in the physical and in the spiritual. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, what? Want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That's food. That's physical. He leads me beside the still waters. That's drink. That's physical. But in the spiritual, he restores my soul. That's redemption. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's using the authority of his name and using the righteousness, his righteousness as your righteousness. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now that's the promise of divine direction where you don't know which way to go. I will fear no evil. That's because perfect love casteth out all fear. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You no longer have to rely on things and stuff to bring you comfort. But now his presence, being a part of the kingdom, the benefit of being a part of the kingdom is to have the presence of God in your life. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now I can be at peace and I can be fulfilled even when the enemies are at the door. Thou anointest my head with oil. He'll cover and guard my mind with his presence. My cup runneth over. I'll have more than I need because I'm a part of the kingdom. Surely goodness and mercy. Can you put a price on the goodness and the mercy of God? It's far outweighs anything we could ever worry about that's temporal. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's the promise of God that will last forever and ever and ever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word dwells, the Hebrew word, it means family. Do you see what God's saying here? When you come into the kingdom, you're a part of my family. Now I'm your father and I'll take care of you because you're my children. God is our priority. And you know what? We are God's priority. So remember, don't worry. Don't worry. You cannot keep the worrying spirit from coming to you, but you can keep the worrying spirit from staying with you. So Karen and I, we're so thankful for you. And we know that we have a great God guarding us and watching over us, keeping us. And he is not going to let you go under. He is, his hand is on you. He is doing things behind the scenes, orchestrating things that you are not even aware of. He's already in your tomorrow, working things out for you to step right into those things and to be blessed by his hand. And I can see him in my spirit reaching into our church and doing such a fabulous spiritual work in us, getting us to have a higher level of trust in him because we're part of the kingdom. Amen. Well, Karen, I want you right now, I want you to pray over families. Would you do that? Lead us and pray over families. 
Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for the word that you spoke into our spirits, that even when worry and fear may knock at our door, that because we have trusted in you, that you will keep us and you will sustain us and you will be with us and you will walk with us. I ask you, God, to bless every family that is represented in the Pentecostals of Lafayette, whether they are a member, whether they are connected to a member, whether they are a family member of someone that's our, in our church. God, you know every connection and yeah. we ask you to cover every family with your presence and with your peace, God, with the peace that passes all understanding, how that we can have peace even when we don't even know why we have peace, when everything yeah. around us is unsure yeah. and unstable and we can still trust in the word that you tell us that you are our provision, that you are our provider, you are our sustainer. You are the rock that we stand on. You are the hope that we cling to, that we can look to you for our health. And I trust you. I trust you tonight, God, to put your hand of protection, your hand of provision, your hand of safety over every family that's represented in our church. Strengthen us, God. Help us to look to you and trust you in all things. And when we do that, yes. you will honor our faith and you will honor our trust and you will be with us every Every step of the way and give you all the glory and all the praise and all the thanks for all that you're doing in our families in Jesus name in Jesus name Jesus in Jesus name. name amen amen what a powerful evening we have felt here in our uh you know our little kitchenette and uh at the table. yeah at the table with the Webers we love you once again and we're so thankful for the things God is doing during these times uh, don't overlook what he's doing. Don't overlook what he's doing. You're on a launching pad. Don't forget. We love you. God bless you, you. And we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.